All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm jumping back in for some DAX measure templates. Uh, this is Mike Carlo from Power BI Tips. We're going to go through another example here, uh, just around another quick DAX measure that has been built uh, by the community, and I'm just going to kind of explain it here real quick. So let me give you a little bit of a scenario setup here. Uh, I have a Power BI data model in front of me. I have kind of two um, tables here. One where we have a fact table with data by the first of the month. So if you look here on the left-hand side, we have a date and an average of sales. And then the formula to calculate this would be the average of sales and then doing the average of a column. So this, this works very well. If I click on my data elements here from my fact table, we can clearly see that we're able to highlight an information. And then we have a KPI card that's just resolving the data at the high level here. Now, one thing you'll notice as you build more data models, there will be certain cases where you incorporate a date calendar. So let's look at the data model here really quick. And I have this dim date calendar. And this is just a simple relationship between a dimension date calendar and then our fact table, where we're just relating date to date inside those two tables. Pretty straightforward. This is, this is nothing very hard. But as you begin to build data models, you're always going to want to incorporate some level of a dimensional date table. So that's what we're doing here. If I go back over to the data model, you'll notice that our dimension table, right? So a continuous date table should have all of the dates for the entire year. And so what we're using here to generate this calendar table is a DAX calculated table where we're using calendar auto. And this is just automatically generating a full date calendar uh, for us. And it's doing for every single day in the year 2020 and 2021, which we can see over here on the left-hand side, we have a date range that goes that spans two years. What this will do is this will create a, a full date calendar and every single day will have a continuous date range from January of 2021 to December of 2021. Sorry, I said that wrong. January of 2020 all the way to December of 2021. So that's what this is doing. The reason why this is important is when you click on items in this date table, there are often times where there'll be date table items where the formula cannot resolve a single value. So we have an average across the sales table, so the average of sales, but we're seeing blank values here. And that's because there is no data in the fact table. And so sometimes you want to force that blank value to be uh, something other than blank or just show blank in your KPI cards. So let's let's go use let's go use the DAX templates to figure out how we can solve this. So we go over to external tools on the home ribbon and then we click on the DAX generator icon and this can be installed uh, via uh, the Power BI Tips Business Ops and I've covered that in earlier episodes but we'll for now you can assume that we already have it installed. Clicking on DAX generator will bring up the DAX generator. And now in here I've already loaded a bunch of templates that I already have uh, in place from the GitHub repo which will be also in the video description link. But here we have a whole bunch of um, templates and the community I think has been amazing. We have a, a ton more templates. I think we're up to 40 now or so uh, with templates that people have contributed to this. So down here towards the bottom, we have two new measures, one called measure with force to dash and measure with force to zero. So what these are doing are these are creating an additional measure calculation. If you look at the template here, we have the measure input values. This is the name of the measure. And then we're going to create a variable where we're going to inject the measure name. And then if the testing this, so we're going to test this measure, if it returns a blank value, we'll force it to resolve to zero. So what we can do now is we can go create this template by clicking on the, the measure input value up here at the top. So we're going to go select a measure from the data table. This measure will be forced to, to be zero when a blank value is returned. So if I click on the measure input, I can go into my, my data table here and say, let's go to the average of sales. And so that will generate the appropriate measure using that input measure for me. When I click generate, you can see we've generated this automatic code here. So the average of sales forced to zero is now the new measure name. The average of sales name, that was the name of the measure we're going to consume. And this will then build this DAX formula for us. So we're good to go. I'm going to hit create and update. And then it's going to ask me, where do you want to put this measure? What table does this thing belong in? And we're going to click on the fact sales table because that's where we want to place the measure once we have it. So clicking on fact sales, it'll then say up here, the measure has been created. We are happy and can move on. So then I'll close out of DAX templates. 
And then I'll go back over to my data model. And what we should see here. Oh, I actually have a force to profit here. That's probably not the wrong one. So maybe I let me refresh the model here real quick. Or refresh. There it is. So refreshing my model made it appear. There's my average of sales, and we're forcing the value to zero. So this is our new calculation. So how are we going to leverage this calculation? Well, I have another page that speaks to that example. So here's now the new calculation. We have our original one where we were doing average of sales originally here. And then now our new one, which is this one. This is calling the average of sales, the one that we made previously. But now we're also forcing it to be a value of zero. So what you'll notice, there's two implications here. And this is something I want to be very clear to point out. Because we're now forcing the calculation to do something when it's returning a blank value, the table on the left-hand side is only going to resolve data where there's actually real numbers. So this is what we call filter context. So the filter context of the date table is every single day in 2020 and 2021. But the average calculation resolves to a blank value. So when the filter context for the day is blank, the data table will not show it. So that's why on the left side of the, the table here, we only have just a list of dates where we are able to actually evaluate the calculation. So the average of sales is being evaluated here. Now, the reason we don't have every single day for the entire year is because those values are resolving to blank. When we change the filter context, we're changing how we're handling this is blank value. And so instead of returning a blank value to the visual, instead we're forcing the is blank to now be zero. So in our new calculation here, you can see that every single day now has a zero value. This is good when you're using a KPI card, your high level aggregation, but this may not be good when you're doing things at a table level. We have a lot of repeating values by using this force method to override the calculation statement to, you know, it was blank value, but instead we're going to replace it with a zero. This could cause your memory or, or visual errors where you say, hey, this visual has run out of memory because it's making so many different rows of data. So just be very cautious if you're going to use this type of calculation inside a table. But now that we have this, what we can do now is we can click on the different dates, and now we'll see our KPI cards at the top are resolving correctly now. So for this day, as an aggregate form on the 3rd of January, we don't have any data. There's nothing there. And therefore, we'll get the zero values at the average sales being forced to zero. So this is how we can we can adjust these calculations. And if we scroll down further here in the table, I'll scroll down farther here until we hit, uh, I think there will be a number here at some point. There we go. Uh, just scroll across one here. So in this case, we do have data resolving for September 1st. We do have some values. So if I click on September 1st here, we'll see that the in fact the two calculations are matching. And then you'll also see in the left-hand side, that is the same evaluation statement as our average sales. So we can also do this with a, a couple of additional other things here. So um, we have two measures that we're going to talk through. One was just forcing it to the value of zero. And we have another DAX statement where we force it to a text value. So I'm going to go back into the external tools. I'm going to go back into DAX generator again. This will then pull up my DAX generator. And then I've, I'm going to load another template now called measure with force to zero. Oh, sorry, we already did that one. We want to do measure with force to a dash. So if I click on this one, I'm going to click on the measure input again. We're going to go again, grab our average of sales. I'm going to go click generate. And then this looks correct. I'm just going to zoom in here real quick so we can see it. Yep. See, average sales force to dash dash. And then we have now instead of a zero value, we're going to put dash dash in the middle there. So there's no value detected. Hit create or update. We're going to put this back into our fax sales, and there it goes. Automatically adds it back into our fax sales. I'm going to quickly refresh my model again. Hit refresh here. And there we go. So now I have another measure that is now adjusting the sales to force it to dash dash. So I'm going to go over here to this KPI card. And we will now swap out the force to zero measure with the new force to dash dash. Switching that over. Now when I click another value here that is zero, we can now see that the sales card is now a text value of dash dash. There's no data being supported there. And then when I click over here to the nine, uh, nine September 1st, 
we now get our data value. This is just a very common pattern uh, that we use a lot in adjusting between cards and tables. And when we wanna change the filter context or change the expression that's coming out of the, the DAX statement. Here's our final example. So we have um, our, now our, our clean example here. Instead of using the average of sales, we're gonna use our average of sales to force zero, zero. So this is where we combine kind of two measures now to represent the table and represent the card. So in the table, we'll use the average of sales, which will give us the correct data down below. But in the card at the top, we'll force the average sales to be dash dash. So that way, if someone selects something on the report page, for example, January 4th, the table will automatically blank out all the data and then the card will automatically have dash dash. So this is where we're mixing and matching the two different calculations together. We do want the average calculations to still exist as a measure in the model, but we also want this um, stylized measure that we could use in the cards. All right, well, that's about it. We're not gonna go over how to build this measure um, inside DAX templates. Maybe I'll do that in another video, but for now, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Hope you enjoyed this little quick demo around using some DAX templates. If you wanna go find these, I will I will uh, call out a quick thing here is, um, if you want to go get more of these templates, you'll go into DAX generator. And I believe there's a link in here. If you click this little help button, Dieter, who's made the DAX generator templates here, uh, has a really great write-up about all the different DAX templates and things that are out here on his website. And you can scroll down here until I think we have a whole GitHub repo. Uh, let's see here, optionally use the wizard. Okay, here, create your own template. If you want to create your templates, you can go visit dax.powerbay.tips. That will allow you to build your own templates if you want to be so ambitious there. We have a couple of videos on that in this series. And then there's a whole repo. We have this GitHub repo, DAX templates, and then a template tree here. So this is where all the templates are coming from. Uh, this is the GitHub repo, and this will also be in the video link as well. The ones that we were specifically looking at today are the totals and the two new ones I added today, which would be um, measure with force of dash and measure to force zero. All right, we hope you like this uh, demo today. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want some more content like this. Feel free to comment down below if you have any questions around how this works. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.